Welcome to each and every one of you. Today we're going to be covering graves. And now my goal behind this video is to make you a better graves player and also to give you a better understanding of the champion as a whole by the end of the video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lofit. I do educational content, I do tips videos, guide videos, and I also stream here on YouTube. Now I also heavily value my viewers time and I make sure to have timestamps at the top of my page on at every single point of my videos if you want to skip this intro or if you want to skip over a certain tip that you already have a really good understanding standing enough. If you want to contact me directly with any questions, you can hit me up in the comments down below. You can um, hit that subscribe button and the bell button if you want to be notified when I go live and when I stream on YouTube and you can ask me those questions live. Or I'm going to pin a comment with uh, a Discord link if you want to um, chat with me and uh, fellow people that are looking to climb. It is a uh, great little community if that interests you at all. Also, I heavily encourage you guys to add your own tips down below because um, I am a bit limited with this format of only going five tips because I don't want to make my videos too long and just too windy. So um, make sure to, if you want to help out your uh, fellow Graves players to make sure to comment down below and that will uh, wrap up kind of my intro and let's get right into tip number one. All right, and getting into tip number one, a lot of the um, intermediate and advanced Graves players will know about this, but I really want to target the beginner players that are just looking to pick up Graves and give them a better understanding of what's going on with Graves kit. Now with your auto attacks, you are going to be doing a shitload of damage. The closer you are to the champion, think of it if you ever played uh, Halo or Call of Duty, when you get have, have a shotgun, you are doing a lot more damage when you're closer up, just based on the amount of pellets that are hitting the enemy. So for example, with the towers, if you're hitting them from the max range, we got to turn off tower invincibility here. So I'm hitting it for about 55. The armor's going to change once this plate gets taken and we can do a little bit. So 46. I'm doing 46 damage from this max range. And when I get really close, I'm doing 69. So it's all about getting into the optimal range when you're looking to auto attack towers, particularly when there's no one around and you're just looking to maximize and get points. You want to get as close as possible um, where all of your pellets are hitting the uh, tower. Next up, it is the exact same way on players and champions and jungle mobs. The closer you get, the more damage you're going to do. I'm going to show you one more time. So I'm critting for about 368. And then we're critting for 736 when we're getting close. So always keep this in mind and then it's going to be the exact same when you go over to jungle minions. So it's about 1236. That was an and that was an energized shot critting for 1236. So there is going to be quite a bit of different damage if you are making sure to auto attack people from really um, close ranges and taking advantage of the innate takiness of his kit that gives you a bit more armor um, when you use your quick draw a lot and you're getting in front of people's faces. So whenever you're looking for a burst combo and you're say waiting in the jungle for someone to come, you want to wait for them to get as close as possible and let your, um, your auto attacks just do a crap ton of damage. And that will wrap up tip number one. All right, and getting into tip number two, I want to talk about something that is going to be extremely important as you move on with Graves, and that is taking advantage of where Graves shines really heavily, and that is in condensed areas with a lot of walls that can increase the bounce back of your Q and also increase the effectiveness of your abilities. When you're playing any sort of ability based champion, taking advantage of very condensed corridors is going to be to your benefit because you're going to be able to hit several people with your abilities. So keep this in mind when you're looking to play and particularly in late game when there's a lot of fights around the Baron or maybe an Elder Dragon, you want to look to take advantage of fights that are on the ramps before they might go into a little bit more open areas of maybe a lane or kind of out in the open um, river. So always look to take the fight to the enemy there and see if they will engage you because you should be able to just absolutely annihilate them in these small corridors because First of all, you can have your auto attack. It's going to hit several different people, even when you're at max range. As you can see, you're taking advantage of every single buckshot, similar to single target damage when you're putting all of your buckshot on one champion. When there are a couple people that are kind of lined up in, um, in this ramp, you are able to hit three people with the different um, buckshot 
abilities and then obviously you can get the Q, R, and W is going to hit and just really cause a lot of damage and a lot of um, just chaos in the ranks when they see just a huge chunk of damage going off and they there hasn't been any response yet so look to take advantage of graves and always make sure to try and get as much vision control as possible with things like sweepers and control wards because your ability to um, get and set up bush traps with against people is going to be extremely strong with graves because you're able to throw out a crap ton of burst damage on the enemy and they very rarely will look to um, return fire on you because you just did a shitload of damage to them and they are about to um, die so that will wrap up tip number two all right, and getting into tip number three, I want to talk about something that might be a little bit different that you're probably not used to seeing a lot of people talk about, and that is I actually don't play Graves in the jungle whatsoever. So as you can see, last season I played about 26 games of Graves in ranked, and that was almost exclusively in the top lane, and this was because it was a safe blind pick for me. It hid the matchup, and it also provided a little bit of cheese in getting some of those early game kills um, that people did not expect in the matchups, and I knew a lot of the Graves matchups really well in the top lane, and a lot of people it would be their first time, or maybe second, third time playing against Graves in their whole life, and I would just beat them over the head with experience so what i want to really get across to you guys here is that it is very graves is actually a pretty flexible pick sure it isn't the most optimal pick but taking advantage of a just a kind of a weird cheese pick can net you a decent amount of wins when you are playing graves so let's get out of the window and i want to talk a little bit about build path now um this is going to be kind of a little bit different because my top lane build the uh, absolute items that i build every single time unless I get really far ahead or I get extremely far behind as I go Death Dance into Phantom Dance or into Infinity Edge and that is my core. These two are just random items I bought. But when you're looking to play Graves, particularly in the jungle, you want to look to really incorporate the items that are needed in the game. You don't want to be building the same thing over and over and over again. Obviously, Warrior is going to be the best pick for Graves, but what you go after that is going to really, it should be reflecting how the game is going for you. If you're might maybe struggling a little bit or you're going even, something like a Black Cleaver can be really strong. If you're going, if you're just smashing the enemy jungler, you're stealing a bunch of farm, you're really far ahead, and you think the game is going to end before um, the absolute late game, you want to look into lethality items. You want to look into things like Yomus. I love that item on Graves because it allows you to close the distance a, a little bit more and get closer for those really strong auto shots that are going to be doing a lot of damage at point blank on squishy so always look to adapt your build dependent on how the game state is going as graves is a very flexible champion and with what he can build if it's very ap heavy you can go things like Ma malmortius if you are just facing a bunch of really big burst damage enemy champions that are really um, have high impact abilities you can go things like guardian angel against something like a zed or a fizz that are just looking to one shot you but they aren't as effective after they use their ult this can be a great item so look to play around with a couple of different items and i think you're going to start seeing a lot of things open up for you you don't want to be that one guy that like watches a pro player or watches a really good graves player and just all of a sudden be like oh i'm just gonna build that every single game that's really not how it works you want to really adapt your build to the current game state if you have any questions about um builds or if you have any questions about my personal pocket pick of playing graves in the uh top lane you can um hit me up here or in the comments and I, i'll give you a pretty good uh rundown of the uh builds i use and that will wrap up this tip Okay, and let's get into tip number four. One thing that I really want to talk about, and I think is a really important thing to understand when you're playing Graves, is he doesn't really scale too well with levels. He scales extremely well with items, and where does that leave you? As you don't have any percentage, true damage, or things that just start scaling really well into the late game, and you have a lot of flat damage values, you're going to scale off items and rely on items quite heavily. That's why you see a lot of graves that are very inconsistent. It isn't something like a Malphite that just has a really high base effectiveness through his kit. He needs to scale off getting a lot of resources around the map, and this is completely fine because graves has a insanely good way to wave clear through his Q and he has a just an extremely he has a perfect kit almost for 
clearing out waves and for farming as much as possible so when you're playing in solo queue you want to take full advantage of the fact that you don't know these people you don't know how good they are they are an unknown quantity to you so you want to try and pick up as much farm as possible whether it is your jungle whether it is the enemy's jungle whether it is scuttle crabs whether it is lane farm that is no one is attending to always make sure that you are trying to you're trying your best to pick up as much gold as possible when you are playing graves i know this is a little bit obvious but i sometimes uh, akin graves to things like trindamir that are just extremely extremely item dependent on how their fights are going to go and how you want to look to play them out around the map so if your team isn't if it doesn't look like there's going to be a big skirmish or a fight you should be trying to get as many resources as possible and this can be done by again lane jungle scuttles and then kills if they are available to you all right and that will wrap up tip number four for graves all right and for the final tip i want to talk about something that a lot of people probably don't think about too often when they are looking to play graves and that is his just absolute ability to set up traps where the enemy is over chasing you and being over aggressive and just getting a extreme amount of turn potential if you haven't noticed already a lot of people are going to chase you when they run away from you particular in the lower elos where they don't have a good understanding of the different damages champions can do a different item break point and level break points so how you can look to take advantage of this is you want to lure them to a pretty overextended state where you are taking the fight on your terms and you're able to put them into a situation that is going to be beneficial for you and detrimental to them so those situations are areas that have terrain obviously with being covered earlier in the uh, first tip and places where graves can be over the wall if he gets into too much danger as well as places that are going to just allow him to bounce his Q extremely quickly but how you want to look to do these turnarounds is maybe do an auto attack and kind of keep baiting them deeper and deeper into your jungle where you are going to be able to turn around with a extremely large Q that is going to do a lot of damage and is going to force them to do a couple of things if they want to continue chasing you which a lot of them will because they think that you are running and that they should get an easy kill here they are going to take both parts of the Q because they are going to be going in that straight line to you and that Q is bounce back is going to have that second part in its path also so this is going to set up a lot of extremely easy skill shots to land on enemies because they're going to be moving in extremely predictable ways when they are chasing you. So a classic kind of turnaround would look like something like a uh, they're chasing you right into this corridor. You auto Q and then R and then maybe you um, continue back this way or maybe you can E up into them. But the whole point is to try and get them into an overextended state with junk, with walls around and then turning on them. You don't want to show them your power too early. Maybe in, in the river where you do not have the best amount of uh, walls to get those cues off on you want to wait until you're in the optimal state also the kind of second part of this tip that i really wanted to cover the reason why i love top lane graves i'm just going to show you something real quick when you're a high level and all you have is death stance and a little bit of uh, the sanguine blade you have a little bit of extra damage i mean this, the baron doesn't even damage you you can literally take it with auto attacks so lifesteal can be extremely strong on graves because of just his extremely just extremely strong um base damages with his autos i mean i'm just shredding through this baron and this is just auto attacks i don't even need to get the extra healing from the abilities um with my death dance passive so keep that in mind when you're playing graves maybe try a couple of lifesteal uh builds i know sometimes it doesn't seem too optimal as you see a lot of um pro players they're just doing basic ad builds out of the jungle and trying to maximize damage but um you are able to drain tank some people in the later portions of the game and you're able to do baron at a decent quip when you have a pretty strong build all right and that will wrap up my final tip guys as always take it easy